Now with that, I'd like to hand you over to Guido Van Rossum, who some of you may know is the creator of the Python programming language. He's also a member of the App Engine team, and he'd like to talk to you briefly about Python and App Engine. Guido? Thanks, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> couldn't hear myself. Uh, so, well, yeah, if you know anything about me or Python, you probably know that I like to work on tools for developers. Uh, I've, I've been doing that, making tools for developers, actually, for much longer than Python exists, for, for more than 30 years, as far as I remember. And the re recurring theme for me has always been that the, the stuff I like to work on is actually stuff that makes life easier for developers. And of course, it's a very selfish goal because I'm a developer and it's sort of a self-referential thing there. <coughs> uh, so with Python, I've done that for a, for a couple of decades now almost. Uh, now I've joined the Google App Engine team and I'm really excited about what this team is unveiling here and, and what's the po what the potential is and what you can do immediately with it, with this software. Uh, ap all apart from being excited that the Python is the first language that the team picked. <coughs> and I had nothing to do with that. Uh, so I have a confession to make. One of the reasons I'm so excited about this tool is I'm, I'm sort of a reluctant user of uh, the Unix root password and those kind of things. And even though I, I love the idea of web powerful software like Apache or MySQL, I'm actually very sort of uncomfortable with having to configure all those things. And I'm, I, I try not to, to get near there. And in the past, I've always had people do that for me. And now, of course, Google App Engine will sort of make that whole stuff go away. Uh, so what, what I, <laughs> I see I have a fan in the audience. <laughs> What I like to do is just write code for an application and run it, have it deployed. Bingo, that's it. That's, that's, the, that's sort of the part of the development cycle that I like to work on. So as far as I know, this is the first time that Google is actually making it possible for third-party developers, people outside Google, to run their software on Google servers. And I think, I think actually that is maybe Quite apart from all the great features in the system, that is one of the very big things about this, this project. <coughs> it really is, for me personally, and I think for you all, a very big deal. So I get, what, what, sort of what I get out of, out of this by having joined this project is I get to work with developers at an enormous scale. I get to provide tools, make, make people happy at a very large scale, maybe larger than uh, Python originally was even. Uh, and I sort of, I get to work with developers outside Google. For the last two years, I've been working mostly with developers inside Google, which also was a, actually a lot of fun. And so finally, uh, I am a relative newcomer to this team. Not that, not that I uh, just joined yesterday to uh, en endorse the product, no, nothing like that. There's actually, there's, there's quite a bit of code in the SDK that, that I wrote personally. Uh, but definitely I, I sort of, much of the pro product was, was there or was, was being designed. And when I saw the team present its stuff, I really thought, wow, they, they, they've got all the parts lined up right. All, I was really excited that they were doing so many things right. So that's, that's sort of how I decided to switch teams. So what, switch, switching uh, pace a little bit about what, what we're actually offering in terms of Python. And Kevin had actually mentioned quite a bit of this already, but sort of I want to re-emphasize that we really are offering the full Python language, 100% of the language, not a single keyword left out. Uh, we did have to remove a few things from the standard library. Uh, but in addition, you get all those great APIs like the data store, the GQL language, uh, WSGI, standard web request processing, and of course, templating. And of course, we also offer Django. Django is actually, a version of Django is part of the SDK and part of the software that's installed on the servers. And if you don't like that, you can upload your own version, your own version or your own t framework 
you don't have to limit yourself to uh, what code you wrote yourself. You can add third-party software and upload that to the server and run it as part of your application. And that's actually how we expect that most people will be using frameworks. So we did have, as I said, we did have to remove a few things from the standard library. And that's, that's sort of most of those things were removed for, for one of three reasons. One, the first thing we don't allow is writing to the file system. Uh, there are some security aspects to that, but the main reason is that since we're a distributed system, we never know where those files actually end up. The, the file you write now might be lost a millisecond later, your request, or your, requ your request might never end up on the same machine. Uh, so writing to the file system would be a bad idea anyway. Reading the file system, of course, is allowed because that's where the code of your application is, and you can certainly read your own code and your own data if you want to. Uh, the second thing that we don't allow uh, is anything that has to do with directly making requests to the web. You can't open a socket. Instead, we have things like the URL fetch API where that just takes care of all the mechanics of making an, a, an HTTP or HTTPS request out to the web and giving you the results back. Or the mail sending API. And I expect in the future there will actually be uh, more things like that. And the third thing that we're not allowing you to, to use at this point is threads. And most of the time you won't actually need them because your application is already being executed on a distributed, app, distributed network. So you don't have to worry about, para, about sort of multi-threading your application in order to get performance. We take care of all that. And so you don't have to worry about the downside of thread locking and all those things either. So finally, and again, you heard this from me, uh, Python is not the only language for Google App Engine. It's the first language, but the whole infrastructure is completely language neutral. And any language runtime that can be hardened in some way uh, is possible to port to this architecture. And we're actually looking for feedback for, from people. What sort of, what language should we focus on next? What, what's the next language you would like to uh, write your application in besides Python? Oh. And <laughs> Of course! <laughs> Never heard of it, sorry. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, our next speaker is Pete Kuhlman, product manager, and he'll tell you quite a bit about our administration console. Pete, take it away.